Hello and good evening. Welcome to another fundamental video in the series of how to for V Rising. This is going to be an in-depth guide and understanding of your servants. Servants are arguably one of the most important parts of V Rising, especially for hardcore PvP and PvP as your servant setup roster is going to hopefully stop your enemy from sieging you and getting all of your mats and breaking your walls and on the hardcore servers either taking over or outright destroying your castle so here we have uh, some servants that are ready this is a tier 2 one and so he's got a very lower expertise I just pulled out of my coffin literally right as I started this video um, a tier 3 rifleman so we are gonna go ahead and open this up and give him I just want to showcase that you know you just give them your gear uh, or you know obviously a second set of gear depending on the circumstances and it, it doesn't matter what you get done they, they still keep their their initial class right it's just for for levels but he has 637 power he's gonna be doing damage and he's got more health it's also going to affect the hunting aspect of this which I'm going to showcase but all in all, this is now a level 61, and each player can have, on the official servers, I believe, up to nine servants per castle. So in clans of four, you're going to have 36 servants. Now these servants open and close doors, and they wander around your castle, unless you put a servant lock on your doors, which is going to be very important for keeping them out of certain areas and forcing them to defend other areas. So... In any case, I'm going to go ahead and press forward. Uh, I just, I really want to say that your servants are very, very, very important. People who are rushing and trying hard and playing a lot are going to be ready to siege on day one or two. So it really is very vital that you try to really churn out some sets of gear for your, your you know, charmed servants and keeping them up on par with where you are. That way you don't always have to be online and hopefully when they come to siege, which does the server announcement, they'll have other players at their back, and then in front of them, they will have a bunch of servants, right? Especially riflemen, fire archers, spellcasters, knights, things, um, brutes who stun, bandits who go invisible and incapacitate. There is just such a massive variation in the amount of defenders you have and how useful they could be. Um, the meta has not been established yet, but I, I must say there's probably going to be a lot of ranged servants. Um, clearly the defenders have the advantage in this game not only for being able to sally forth from the castle to try to destroy the golem but also to fall back into safety to heal um, you know get more blood resurrect um, etc etc moving forward the PvE portion which will be dangerous on PvP servers but you access the castle throne right and now I can send my servants out to get me loot including tier 3 areas it's got the golden jewelry for tier 3 um, but let's go ahead and just take a look at this and you can you can add a couple and you need about 700 so this defender is gonna go really well put him in there um, chance of injury that's you know 20% but 20% chance of success because we carefully covered this if you've played MMORPGs you're gonna be familiar with this system um, but they've done a really, really, really good job with it. And now it does take 23 hours for them to go out and go to these areas before they bring back gear for you. But they're going to bring back a lot of loot. 50 schematics is not nothing. That is a very, very grindable amount. They're also going to bring back a lot of area loot. Um, you know, tier 3 threads, tier 3 golden jewelry. Uh, it took me an hour or two of farming just to get 12 by myself. And I just came to T3, but um, I'm just saying you, you have these these monsters and they're at item level and you're gonna send them out and you can have each person in your clan can have nine so you send a bunch out they're gonna be farming a lot of mats a lot a lot of mats so once I'm not gonna send them out that was actually <laughs> would have been bad because that's my only set of t3 um, and it is challenging to be honest to uh, to get this these gear sets but in any case that's the uh, the PVE portion and then just for your knowledge when you send them out they are still um they're still at home right so they can still be killed and looted they just won't be defending they're kind of out like you know on a mission essentially incapacitated within your castle 
Um, now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go showcase how to get new servants. And so for the sake of time, we're going to go ahead and go for a nearby kind of lower tier servant just so we can do it. Now we want to go back to the stables and we're going to go ahead and get one of our little horses. Uh, uh, we'll take Ein. Unfortunately, our our main horse, Cowardly, uh, did die earlier today in PvP, but that's going to happen. Your horses are going to be stolen and killed uh, pretty consistently on the PvP server. So this will be obviously very easy, right? Here's a monster. <clears throat> it's level 16. Up. Uh, we're fighting a boss. We're fighting the sun. We're taking too much damage. I can't see. Oof. All right, so this is a low-level monster. we got to take our weapon off. Give him a little punch. A little pow pow. A little pow meow. And then we are going to go ahead and dominate. So we put on dominating presence. And they have to be lower than 30% HP to get them. So this is kind of going to. We're not going to go over it right now. We're not going to cover it. But having your castle in an area that's very strong and, you know, tier oriented, like tier 2, uh, tier 3, or tier kind of 2 3. You're going to be able to pull those servants in a lot faster, right? You're going to always be able to see their blood level. You're going to see what class they are. And you're going to be able to build quicker. But the servants do run really fast when they follow you after their charm, including if you're on a horse and sprinting. They follow you at speed. They are very, very quick. Now, he can be one shot here. Uh, monsters will attack him as though he's a vampire, um, and etc. So we're going to go ahead and shove this guy in this coffin. So he's got 5% blood quality, very low. He's going to be a very low expertise, which affects how much power he's going to have. And then he's a bandit, so he'll do best gathering loot from uh, Farbane Woods. And he also is a warrior type, which gives him military tactics. So of course, you're going to go ahead and want a mix of very strong monsters, especially tier 3 monsters. Um, if you could, The earlier you could get them in your, your clan's lifespan, in the server's lifespan, um, the better it's going to be and the more defensible your siege is going to be. And absolutely, tier 2 and 3 is probably day 1. You'll be safe sending some out as long as you get a stone castle so that you can't be sieged. But fundamentally speaking, servants, great for defense in PvP. Additionally, you can pull monsters. They patrol and kill monsters around your castle. If you have a castle in a decent spot in tier 2, even if it's a random spot, let's say this, or maybe like over here, or like over here, um, especially right here. The bosses that patrol this area for tier two, um, notably are Jade the Vampire Hunter, um, the level 40 Priestess for the healing spells, um, the level 40 Vincent, the Frost guy. I think, tr oh, Tristan might be too low. Um, anyway, you can have those defenders at the edge of your territory and they will help you fight monsters and bosses. So you can not cheese, not exploit, but you can strategically use your servants to help you fight things in the game, um, including the tier three area. So just keep that in mind that your servants are active fighting participants and they will help you defend your PVP. They will help you PVE and you can send them out for 23 hour missions to gather actual large amounts of mats. Additionally, they act as small containers, as you can give them um, loot. Uh, and then they'll show the loot icon to let you know they have stuff. And they can be killed and looted by enemies in PvP. So thank you for that, guys. That is the fundamental part of Servants. Although I... I probably showcase in the same video. I'm going to go ahead and do it. So uh, within the same the same video, I'm going to go ahead and quickly showcase, guys, the, the importance of charming humans, especially those of high blood. This is one of the most important elements in the game. We said arguably servants are, are the best thing in the game. Well, they're also the best as prisoners, right? So here...
Warrior. F oh no, I must have killed our 100% character. Um. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely killed our rogue. Oh no, no, I didn't. One of the other clan members did. So, <clears throat> you can use these prison cells, and you can kill the monsters that are in there, and you could place a new charmed character inside, and you then drain their blood into an empty glass vial, which is carryable on you, and it's considered a consumable, which means you can teleport with it. So, I always, theoretically, if we hadn't killed our 100% character, we would theoretically always have access to 100% blood. Obviously, 100% blood is insane. I'm gonna go ahead and pop some now, just for um, you know, just for the video showcase. But 100% blood, right? We've got maximum everything: 20% crit, 15% movement speed, 25% cooldown on travel skill, uh, crit strike after 50% crit, and then everything's increased by 30%. So it, it's just amazing that you can carry it around. You can use it when you die and get rezzed by your squad mates. You can use it in PvP when you're downed and res. You can use it as a constant source of blood for castle siege defense. Um, obviously, it's going to drop on the ground when you die because it's a consumable and not considered equipment. But this is one of the best systems in the game, um, putting servants in the prison cells. It's going to be very important early game to try to get the 100%, um, especially you know one type of you know warrior, rogue, or brute, or scholar, or whatever you like to use for offense but especially a 100% worker in order to yield massive amounts of resources when you go farm, um, particularly for T2 and tier three, like silver and quartz for glass and cotton for cotton thread, um, mushrooms um, for the T3. But in any case, we're gonna go ahead and quickly showcase how this works. So we're going to uh, drain this character here with the, the glass vial. So now we've got the 49% blood to go. And when you drain him, he's gonna lose X amount, 30 to 60% health. So he is very hurt. And then additionally, he will gain five to 20% misery. So he's at 17. So we need to heal him. So we'll give him a fat goby. So that fish will full heal, but keep in mind, you can also just give them a bunch of rats. It just takes a lot longer um, for, to feed them rats. And then we will also have to lower the misery at some point, which we will do with either this fish or this fish. So it's pretty easy to understand the system. It's just initially hard to figure out, right? So hopefully this fundamental video has helped you guys understand the true and absolute importance of servants for PVP, PVE, mat gathering, and access to very, very high quality bloods consistently. You can theoretically keep a 100%er in this cage forever as long as you're keeping their misery down and their health up and then you could just farm just so many of these you would never lose them except in a siege so that's another reason why you need the siege uh, you need to get into their prison rooms and you need to kill or extract all the blood of their prisoners to really hurt your enemy clans in your quest for dominance and to become the vampire draculas of your server the rising Please like, comment, subscribe, and do all that cool stuff. Thank you guys for listening, and I truly hope this helps. If you have any questions, please let me know. Hit me up on Discord, Twitch, or YouTube. Have an amazing day.